Hi there, welcome to Floating in Books. Welcome to a book haul. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. I've bought books, not in one go. This is definitely something that I think gathered since the start of the year, since you last saw me do a book haul. Uh, what I tend to do is whenever I buy some books, I take a picture of it and send it to my friends to let them know, see, here, 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 here are the books I bought. And um, then I also still know after a couple of months what I actually purchased. And uh, I thought it was time to uh, do an update for you. Uh, some of these I've already read, others I haven't yet. Um, yeah, some of them I just wanted to read upon release, you could say. Um, but a lot of these are just newer releases that I found or things that I was still interested in or continuations of series that have come out new or that I'm getting into. So let me get to it. This is in no particular order, <laughs> by the way, because I've just taken them all off my shelves to be able to show you them. And I'm just gonna show you in no particular order. So I think we're starting in January. Actually, there is a book that I bought this year that I've already decluttered. And it's the Prince Harry Spare Biography, autobiography, whatever, he probably used a ghost writer. Um, I already put it in my local like giveaway library thing in the park um, because I, I just knew after I'd read it and I finished it, I was like, I don't need to keep this around. I've read it. It's fine. I now know everything about Prince Harry's life from his perspective that I could possibly know. So I don't, I don't need to keep, I just don't need to keep it. So that's why I decided to get rid of that straight away. Um, so yeah, that's a book that's no longer there. Um, another thing that happened is that I went to London in the meantime, and I got a gift voucher for my friends for my birthday to the local bookstores. So that's why there is a lot here um, because I just, I just wanted to buy books. I'm so much enjoying reading again. I'm really sort of in the, I'm just, I'm just on a roll and, um, it makes me then also want to buy more books. If I'm not reading, then I also feel I should be buying books. But if I'm reading, then, you know, I, I can read roughly 50 books a year. And that also means that I need to make sure that these shelves stay stocked with things that I haven't read yet. And I just get ex excited about some of the new releases. So this is actually a book that I bought when I was in London, <laughs> but that I almost bought with the gift, uh, gift voucher that I got from my friends. So I actually spotted this at my local drugstore when I went shopping to spend that gift card. And then I, you know, I had too much. And I was like, you know what? I don't, don't mind spending a little bit more, but I didn't want to like spend so much because I knew I was going to London as well. So that's why I picked this one up later. It's the Leviathan by Rosie Andrews. And it's a historical fiction sort of uh, story. Um, and it's set in like civil war England time. So like the mid 17th century, um, and there's some mystery going on linked to some sort of shipwreck. Something has awoken and now it will not rest. I don't know. Maybe this is like the Essex serpent that I read a couple of years ago that seemed very much like mysterious and dark and ooh, set in a historic setting. And then it turned out to be a romance novel. So I'm still <laughs> curious whether this is gonna go that way, but this is not really talking about relationships in the blurb. So uh, I think I might like this. Um, I usually love a good historical fiction. And for once, like for historical fiction, it's quite short. Um, and it was a Sunday Times bestseller. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I just fell for the cover as well. I got this with the gift card. Uh, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. And this is some hardback edition. Uh, this is the book about the ogre that starts a coffee shop. Everybody was raving about it, how it's like the best cozy fantasy they've read in a while. I started this as an audiobook and couldn't get into it. <laughs> So I'm curious to see when I read it sort of with my own voice that I like it better. Um, with audiobooks, for me, what makes an audiobook isn't the story, it's the narration. And the author himself had read this out and I didn't like his voice at all. Like for reading it, hour, like listening to it hours on end, it wasn't gonna happen. Uh, and that's the thing right now. If I start an audiobook, I always play the sample to hear the speaker so that I know whether I'm gonna, like if I'm up for that sort of pacing and 
all that. And with this, it just, it wasn't a match at the time. So that's why I was hoping that if I were to buy the actual physical copy, I would actually read it. This book took TikTok by storm and it sounded right up my street. It's giving me Sarah J Maas kind of vibes. It's Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. That's her name right there. Um, this has like some sort of like dragon thing, but it's got a romance in there as well. It's kind of like from the blurb, it's kind of giving me Sarah J Maas subplot. Like if you read Throne of Glass, there's a subplot in there with wyvern, wyverns? Is that how you say that in English? It's like one of those words that I've only read, but I've never tried saying it and now I'm trying to say it and I'm not sure what, to sound, what it sounds like. Uh, but this dragon-like creature. Um, and these witches that fly them. And um, this is also about dragons and witches that fly them. So I got that sort of association right there stuck in my brain. I was like, I need to read that. So I got it. Then this I bought because I'm really enjoying the, um, uh, what's it called? The Red Sister Trilogy. Inherent, no? The Ancestor. I'm, not, I'm never sure on the names of these book series, you guys, but Mark Lawrence wrote it. So he's the author of this book. This is his newest release. This is the book that wouldn't burn. And I believe, like, in my brain, this is about, like, a library and, um, Someone is trapped inside it. It sounded good. And I've really enjoyed his writing style in those Red Sister and the Grey Sister books that I've read in the past through a couple of months. And it's really one of the books that has gotten me out of my reading slump. So I was like, when I saw this lying on the table, I was like, I'm gonna pick that up. This is another book that I wanted to pick up. I bought another book by this same author, uh, Janice Hallett last year. Uh, the Twyford Code, and this is The Appeal, which is actually her first novel. And these are novels slash murder mysteries that you need to solve along with the char character. So it is a detective story, um, but you have to be like, I guess, uh, like a Hercule Poirot at the same time. And it's sort of like written as mixed media. So you're not getting a true like story storyline, but you're getting all of these messages and like emails and things like that. And you kind of need to piece it together yourself. So they are like little puzzles. And the idea of it just really appeals to me. Um, I bought the Twyford Code last year, I think. Um, and I haven't read it yet, but this was still stuck in my head. Uh, one murder, 15 suspects, can you un uncover the truth? And uh, I think that that's just sounds like a lot of fun. And um, I wanna have fun when I read too. Uh, this is one that I picked up quite recently cause I went like, it was the end of my summer break and I was like, let's celebrate with buying books because what better way, right? And this is another book I had already spotted. It's by Alex Jennings and it's called The, Bla the Ballad of Perilous Graves. And this is set in an alternate version of New Orleans where music is the magic that holds the entire system together. And I read that blurb and that's all I needed to know. Something happens that makes the musical notes unravel and the tune that New Orleans uh, like lives on is being distorted and somebody, our main character is trying to figure out what happened. That's what I get from the blurb. I thought it was great. Um, I like how this cover looks as well, even though yellow spines usually don't survive on my bookshelves very well, they fade very easily. But yeah, this just sounded like a book that I might really enjoy. It is a bit thick. I think it's a debut novel as well. It sounded like something I might really enjoy. I've never been to New Orleans, but I'm pretty sure that when I read this, I'll probably wanna go. Another very recent purchase is this. This is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Uh, this is a fantasy story about two children that are uh, sort of, they have their destiny sort of written in the stars. Um, a boy and a girl. The boy should be like this great warrior. The girl isn't. The boy dies, she takes his place. Sign me up. Sign Again, stunning cover. I'm like, why did I not read this yet? Or like buy it yet? So when I read the blurb on this, I was like, yes. I think I'm going to very much enjoy it. It's giving me sort of like what I know about Poppy War, which is one of the things I wanna read as well. Um, it's sort of giving me that sort of vibe. Um, strong female character, that whole thing, going to some sort of like school to learn. Like she needs to go into a monastery, whatever. Um, I think I'm just gonna like this. And I really enjoy the look of this. So sounds very intriguing and that's why I picked it up. Uh, the next book is Shannon Chakraborty's uh, The Adventures of Amina Al-Shirafi. 
And this, it, it very, like, again, it was the cover that pulled me in. Uh, it sounds like Arabian Nights sort of fairy tale inspired, but it's got pirates. I mean, I was like, you know what? Middle Eastern fairy tales combined with pirates, sign me up, sign me up. I, I just think this is gonna be a ride, a wild ride. Um, and Shannon Chakraborty is, um, I think I have one of her books, but I haven't read it yet. Um, and it's, she's a very popular author as well. So this seemed very enjoyable and I just adore the cover. Then an author I feel kind of on the fence about, but the premise of this just sounded like such a ride. And it's Olivia's Blake's Masters of Death. This was just released a couple of weeks ago. And this, the reason why I'm saying I'm on the fence about this is because I read the Atlas Paradox and the Atlas Six now. Uh, finished the Atlas Paradox as well. I believe there's going to be a third book in that series. And I just, I didn't love them. Not as much as I wanted to. I thought the second one was better than the first one. So I'm hoping there's going to be like a continuous line in her writing that I like it better. Um, but this is about a vampire who is a real estate agent. Need I, like, that's the only thing I needed to know, you know? A vampire, real estate agent, and the house she's selling is haunted. I, that's all I needed to know. I just... I just think it sounds like fun. This is one that I again picked up towards the end of my summer vacation, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. And this, I really, really sounded like, I really like the idea of, so the main character in this book is sort of like not good with people, but she's great with mythology. And she goes to like different places to write up their local history and their mythologies. And then she meets all these characters and it's always a bit of a struggle. So this is very much marketed as like a cozy fantasy, like very whimsical about fairies and all that. So I, again, it was the cover for me that did it. Um, they also had the hardback version, but I know that this floppy paperback, is going to be a lot easier to hold and read when I do get around to it. I do think that with these larger, like if the book is new kind of edition, you just get very spaced out <laughs> uh, editions. So this book is only just over like 300, over 300 pages and it looks humongous. But yeah, I think that this this can be a fun one for sure. I think I got this one pretty early on in the year. Uh, I got this because I own the other three books in the series, but I haven't read it yet. It's The Storm of Echoes, which is the fourth book in the Mirror Visitor series by Christelle Dabo. Uh, I believe this author is Canadian French, something like that. Um, and it's uh, the first one is A Winter's Promise and I've had that on my shelves for a while. I need to desperately read it, but this was just one where I was like, you know what? I have the other ones as well, might as well buy it. Um, because I tend to be better at reading series if I own all the books, that I'm just much more inclined to start them. Um, so yeah, that's that's what this one is, and that's why I bought this one. Then I had to get myself some uh, Silvia Moreno Gar Garcia, again, an author whose books I've had for some time, Mexican Gothic, I've had sitting on a shelf for a while, and uh, Gods of Jade or whatever, whatever the, one of her more fantasy stories. Um, but Velvet Was the Night was another one when I had that gift card for my friends. I was like, ooh, that sounds like something I might like. So I ended up picking it up in London, um, because I saw it again there and I was like, yeah, I just need to get it right now. So a lot of her stories are set in Mexico and this is, it just sounds like this very noir, gothic-y kind of vibe. Um, and that's what very much intrigues me. So this is set in the 1970s. So the, the way I read these blurbs, this is I think the best way to describe it. This is like a very grungy Quentin Tarantino movie set in Mexico. Am I making sense? I'm not even sure. That's the vibe I'm getting from the blurbs. And the next one actually, this one just released this summer. And the minute I heard about it, I was like, I need to read this. Silver Nitrate, also by Silvia, um, Silvia Morena Garcia. It, and this is about two film students who sort of like get caught up in this trap. And it sounds exactly like one of my favorite books I've ever read, which is Night Film by Marisha Peschel. And if you've ever read that, then you know what kind of vibe I'm getting from when I heard first about this book. That book is about an obscure director uh, of some very, like, very dark, grungy, noir kind of movies, and he's disappeared, and his fan base is trying to find out what happened to him, um, and then they start, like, going to his house and whatnot. And this, this is sort of like a similar premise, where we get these two characters who end up joining forces with this horror director who lives next door to them, and then they sort of find out that it's not all horror and it's not all like staged or something. That seems to be the vibe I'm getting from it. 
So I think this is gonna be a gruesome one, um, but I, I like the cover of this. It gives It's giving me like horror movies from the 80s kind of vibes. So Sylvia Garcia Moreno, I definitely need to start reading her books. I got some classics as well. <laughs> Two books that I've been meaning to read for such a long time. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath and uh, Jeffrey Eugenides, The Virgin Suicides. My students had to read this book for a paper back a, like a couple of years ago for a course that I used to teach, and I never got around to actually reading or owning the book, and I'd never gotten around to it because it wasn't part of my reading list. It's one of those modern classics, and by the time I got to modern classics for literature, I kind of stopped taking literature courses. I went back to like the older stuff because I enjoy it better. Uh, and Sylvia Plath, I never read anything by her yet. Some, po some poetry, but not the actual novel she wrote. So two classics, let's see how we feel. Um, and this one I think I got with the gift card. No, I got this one in London, because uh, that's where I saw it. This one is a London purchase. Holly Jackson's A Good, Guide's, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, again, a book I've heard a lot of good things about. It's a series, apparently, it's a trilogy. So this book is about a town where a gruesome murder is, uh, call, uh, is, uh, happens and the person they everybody thinks did it has been caught. But there's this one student who's like, no, I don't think so. And she starts working on it for uh, school to figure out who the actual killer is according to her. And then if the true killer is still out there, like could that actually happen? So this sounds like a detective-y thing that I might like. I think it's one of those books that you might just breeze through. It may be a bit too simple. Not sure I need to, to read the other two books by the time I get to this. Um, that's how I felt about Truly Devious um, that I listened to on audio, but this seemed fun. Another London Purchase, this is the book I picked up at the grocery store. The Murder Game by Tom Hindle. Um, again, a little bit like Agatha Christie, like people are stuck in a house and a murder happens even though they were trying to play a murder game, but then the act, there's an actual murder. Sounded fun. Um, yeah, it, it just sounded fun. A friend of mine had already read it and he said it was okay. Um, Pretty predictable, but still an engaging read. This I picked up recently, tried looking everywhere for it when I was in the UK, couldn't find it, but it's the final book in the Freya McGray series by Oscar de Muriel. This is one of my favorite book series of all time, and it's the seventh book uh, called The Sign of the Devil. The first book in the series is called The Strings of Murder, so if you were to start it, you might want to start uh, check that out. Um, it's set in 19th century Edinburgh, and Frey and McGray are two detectives working for the Edinburgh Police Department, trying to solve weird cases that have a supernatural edge to them. Uh, in the meantime, we get a lot of backstories on these characters. There's a lot of banter. If you like your British humor, you're gonna like this. And these are delicious. I read the sixth book a couple of weeks ago and absolutely devoured it in like a day and a half. This one's a bit thicker, but th I'm, this may actually be my next read. Some more London purchases. The Lady Joker duet, that's what I'm gonna call it, by Ko Kaoru Takamura. I'm sorry, I don't speak Japanese. Um, but I saw this book sitting on a shelf last year, the volume one, um, and didn't buy it. I didn't buy any books when I was in London last year, and I couldn't find it anywhere in the Netherlands. And then I saw that there was a Second one out, volume two was out. And this is sort of like Japanese underground criminals. They meet on a racetrack like they're businessmen, but they have some shady business going on and they've got a problem uh, and they're trying to solve it. Um, I didn't know there was going to be like a second thing and it's actually inspired by true events. So I, I don't know why. I'm super intrigued by these like underground criminal organizations kind of stories. So that's why I picked these up. And this one had the sticker saying, buy one, get one half free, uh, half off. <laughs> and then the lady was like, oh, I'll give you this one half off if you, you know, bought both of them. And I got this one in London, Benedict, Benedict Jacka's Cursed. This is the second book in the Alex Vera series. I read the first one called Faded a couple of weeks ago thoroughly enjoy myself. This is urban fantasy at its finest. I enjoy a bit of urban fantasy for sure. In the first book, we meet Alex Veris. He has a magic shop in Camden in London, but he's also a magician or a wizard, you could say. It's got a reference to Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files, very cheeky in like the first chapter or so. One of his best friends is a spider and a wind spirit who transports him along the skies of London. 
need I say more? This is a very recent purchase. I just picked this up the other day. It's like historical fiction slash fantasy-esque. It's The Beasts of Paris by Steph Penny. Haven't heard anything about it. I just, again, was taken in by the cover. Um, it's set in Paris, late 19th century, 1870. And it's about a character who um, has been in an asylum and somehow she gets caught up in this menagerie and that menagerie doesn't isn't very kind or something. So it's got like a dark twist to it. It sounded intriguing. It is a big boy though. This is, this is not for the faint of heart. I think it's over 500 pages. Again, generous line spacing though, but yeah, this is a chunky one. Something I've already read. This I got with my gift voucher from my friends. This had just dropped around my birthday time and I was like, I need to read this. Ben Aronovich's Winter Gifts, the next novella in the um, Peter Grant series that he has been writing. The first book in the series is called Rivers of London, but there are a couple of shorter spin-off stories that are being released as well. This is about one of the side characters who now becomes our main character. She's a special agent with the FBI, and we are sort of exploring the American side of the weird things. Um, in this one. Um, every, all, all of the regular books are all set in London, um, but we have another novella that takes place in Germany, and then this one is actually in the United States. Um, so that's fun. Um, again, th this is just such an engaging story. Um, these are super action-packed all the time, which is why I love them, and the storytelling is just amazing. And then we get some sci-fi things that I picked up because I, I still want to get somehow a little bit more into sci-fi and I sort of dip my toe in from time to time, but not all the time. So the lady at the bookstore was actually saying, oh, I love that book. I've reread it four times. And this one has been on my, my wish list for quite some time. It's The Long Way to a Small Angry Palette, Planet by Becky Chambers. And this is apparently a really good first contact with aliens kind of sci-fi if you want to get into it. So it won the uh, Hugo Award as well. So um, so this book, I've again heard a lot about online. I've just seen a lot of buzz, but I don't really know what this is about. It's by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. So it's got two authors. It's this, this is how you lose the time war. Um, apparently it's, it's a very short one, but it apparently it has a lot in it. So we'll see how it goes. And then I really want to try my hand at the, uh, some Ursula K. Le Guin. I've never read anything by her. And she's a classic author when it comes to sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, the Left Hand of Darkness has come out in this really pretty edition right now. This wasn't super expensive. And this is, uh, again, part of some sort of like universe she's created, but you can read the books as standalones. That's what I understood from it. And from the blurb on the back, it just seemed like something I might like. Two people stuck on the ice and there's like love and friendship and all of that sort of being explored. Um, so sounds good. And this one, every time I passed this book in the bookstore, I was like, oh, but I own that. Until I actually had a look at my sci-fi shelf when I reorganized my bookshelves and I was like, I don't. So then I made a point of buying Sik Chin Lu. Sorry, my Chinese is not that good. Um, the Three Body Problem. And this is apparently a very good modern sci-fi classic. Uh, it's apparently pretty hard sci-fi, so it's not for the faint of heart, but I wanted to give it a whirl. This one, I think the most raved, book, raved about book from 2022, I think, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Uh, this was on a lot of like best lists of the year kind of thing. Um, it's apparently set in the 1980s and they're into video games and then they kind of lose track of each other and they meet so many years later. Um, that's sort of what I get from it. It sounded a bit like Ready Player One, but with a romance interest in it. I don't know. I've just heard so many good things about it that I just want to know what the fuzz is about. These two I bought pretty early on in the year. Uh, the Hellbent, um, the Lieber Dugo Hellbent book is the second book in the, oh, what's it called? What's the first book called? Ninth House Duology, yes. And that book just cut off at such a weird point that I really still want to know what those characters are going to go through. Even though I didn't love the writing of it, I didn't like the characters, but I hope that it's going to come together in this one. And I haven't read Priory of the Orange Tree yet, but then I saw that Samantha Shanna's second book, uh, is this a prequel? It's like, it's not truly a sequel because it's not a series. You can read them as standalones, but this fits within the same universe. Uh, a Day of Fallen Night, it's apparently about dragons. Apparently it's very slow though. 
So this may be one where I just need to like read like a hundred pages a week and then hopefully by the end of a year I might just be able to like finish the thing. Um, I definitely need a strategy for bigger, bigger books like this. I'm not sure when I'm gonna read it but it's definitely one like if I really truly want to get stuck into something in like, you know, Christmas break or something, this may be a good one. Uh, I think most of these are from an earlier purchase or with the gift card for my friends. I wanna try some Colleen Hoover. I don't think I'm gonna like it much, but Verity was the only blur by hers that I still sort of sound, like, like the sound of. So that's why I bought it. Then Guy Gavriel K, um, A Brightness Long Ago. This is definitely an author that has been recommended to me by you guys quite a lot, um, but I've never read anything by it. And this author was so difficult for me to find for some time. I could only ever find the books online. And then I found him at my local bookstore. And this is a fantasy author that's very revered and he very much takes inspiration from history. And this is, I believe, set in like a Renaissance Italy kind of setting. So it sounds like something I might really enjoy. Then Ken Lu, The Grace of Kings. Again, I'm just taken in by this beautiful cover. I've had this in my hands, ready to purchase it, and there was always something that stood out just a little bit more. So when I had the gift card, I made a I made a point of purchasing this. And then, last but not least, one that I, I, I how do I not own this? <laughs> I love Neil Gaiman, but I had never purchased Coraline, so I got Coraline. And that's it, those are all of the books that I purchased in the past, well, eight months or so. Like, this was like from like January onward. So it was a lot, I know, but I've also been reading a lot more this year. And with that gift card and going to London, I definitely bought some more books over the summer than I normally would. Um, but yeah, I'm, I can't wait to get to some of these and some of them I've already read. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make one video on this channel every single week. So if you'd like to stay tuned for more and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.